He's risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome to Easter worship. So glad that you are joining us today, whether it's live or you're going to watch this later. We are glad that you're joining with us uh, to worship today. And so we greet you, we welcome you in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, let me just give you a, a couple of uh, thoughts and ideas, uh, reminders. Uh, number one is most of our Bible study classes are meeting. I think uh, all of our youth and adult classes are going to get to meet today. Uh, if you have not gotten an invitation to join one, or maybe you've not been in a Bible study class, but you would like to join one, if you would send us an email at connect at lakeshorebaptist.com or email one of the staff members, uh, we'll get you tied together with those classes and get you an invitation so that you can join one of those. Even if you're not a part of the Lakeshore family on a regular basis and you want to be a part of a Bible study class, as you're joining with us through digital worship, we can help you do that as well. Uh, to all of our, our church family, you know that we recently had voted that next Sunday, the 19th, we would have a new schedule for church. We'd have worship and Bible study and then worship again. Uh, so uh, staff has worked with the church council all together, decided instead of launching into that schedule digitally, uh, next week, uh, we're simply going to alternate worship styles. And so next Sunday, our uh, new worship band will be leading us in worship as we gather for worship next uh, Sunday. And then we'll work back and forth today. Uh, piano and choir are leading us uh, as we worship. So just a, a reminder for the, about that for you and let you know that. Uh, also, let you know, Monday uh, after Easter is an official holiday for your church staff. Uh, and So we're going to be off once we get done with activities today and a variety of things that we need to do after this. Uh, we're going to be done and we'll be back in the office and around and available on Tuesday. Um, and they're all tired and need a break. And so we're going to rest some. Uh, and just a reminder of that in case nobody's answering you tomorrow, we'll be back with you on Tuesday. As we worship today, I want us to, to pray, and then I want us to lift our voices in song to the Lord together. Our Father, we thank you for this Easter Sunday morning. Uh, Father, it was cloudy and rainy early on, but the sun is out now and shining. And Father, we thank you for that. That sunshine is good, and we've had lots of cloudy days in, in recent weeks. And so, Father, we thank you for that sunshine that reminds us that the Son, Jesus Christ, is alive and well and shining bright all over the world today and we thank you for that father we we rejoice that we have technology that allows us to have worship services so that uh, we can uh, gather a few of us here to lead in worship and that people all over the place can worship you wherever they are and Lord today May you inhabit the praises of your people. May you be honored and glorified and exalted and lifted up by voices singing to you, by scripture read, by prayers prayed, by sermons preached and proclaimed by preachers all over the place today. That you would be honored and lifted up. Oh Lord, we thank you for this great opportunity to worship you today. It's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Good morning. Matthew 28, 6 tells us he is not here. He is risen just as he said. Christ the Lord is risen today. Let's sing together. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Sons of men and angels say, Alleluia. Raise our joys and triumphs high, Alleluia. Sing ye heavens and earth reply, Alleluia. Lives again our glorious King, Alleluia. Where all death is now thy sting, Alleluia. Dying once he all does save, Alleluia. Where thy 
victory, O grave. Alleluia. Love's redeeming work is done. Alleluia. Fought the fight, the battle won. Alleluia. Death in vain forbids him rise. Alleluia. Christ has opened paradise. Alleluia. Soar we now where Christ has led. Alleluia. Following our exalted head. Alleluia. Made like him, like him rewise. Alleluia. Ours across the grave, the skies. Alleluia. I know he rescued my soul. I know he rescued my soul. His blood has covered my sin. I believe. I believe. My shame. My shame he's taken away. My pain is healed in his name. I believe. I believe. I'll raise a banner. Cause my Lord has conquered the grave. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. I know he rescued. I know he rescued my soul. His blood has covered my sin. I believe. I believe. My shame. My shame. He's taken away. My pain is healed in his name. I believe. I believe. I'll raise a banner, cause my Lord has conquered the grave. My Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives, you lift my burden, I'll rise with you. I'm dancing on this mountain top to see your kingdom come. My Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. Let no one, let no one caught in sin remain inside the lie of inward shame. 
We fix our eyes upon the cross and run to him who showed great love and bled for us. Freely you bled for us. Christ is risen. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling over death by death. Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave. Christ is risen from the dead, we are one with him again. Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave. Beneath the weight, beneath the weight of all our sin, you bow to none but heaven's will. No scheme of hell, no scoffer's crown, no burden great can hold you down in strength. You reign forever, let your church proclaim. Christ is risen from the dead, bling over death by death. Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave. Christ is risen from the dead, we are one with him again. Come awake, come awake. Come and rise up from the grave. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, hell, where is your victory? Oh, church, come stand in the light. The glory of God has defeated the night. Singing, oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, hell, where is your victory? Oh, church, come stand in the light. Our God is not dead. He's alive. He's alive. Father, we just reflect on 
the joy of what today's meeting is all about. And God, we celebrate today because the tomb is empty and Jesus is alive. God, I pray that churches all around the world would, would have the opportunity today to minister uh, far and wide and that your gospel will be proclaimed in a way that maybe it's never even been proclaimed before. And God, I pray that you would give people ears to hear. God, I pray as we continue to worship today, I pray that we would just uh, be joyful and be thankful for the sacrifice that you made for us. This morning, I will be reading from Colossians 3, verses 1 through 4. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. 
Amen. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you that you sent your son to die on a cross. And we remember that today he was risen. And as a result of his death, burial, and resurrection, we have the opportunity, Lord, to accept faith in him, spend eternity with you in heaven. We are so thankful for that. And we sing and celebrate that in word and song this morning. Lord, I pray for each person watching, Lord, that they would um, have a relationship with you. And if they don't, that, Lord, this may be the day that they change, that you would touch their heart and they would understand what it means to be a follower of Christ. We love you and thank you for our opportunity to gather today. It's in Christ Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Jesus Christ, the King of glory, now is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hearts to heaven, voices raise. Seek to God a hymn of gladness. Sing to God a hymn of praise. He who on the cross has saved or for the world's salvation bled. Jesus Christ, the King of glory, now is risen from the dead. Now the iron bars are broken, Christ from death to life is born. Glorious life and life immortal on this resurrection morn. Christ has triumphed and we conquer by his mighty enterprise. We with him to life eternal by his resurrection rise. I live, I live because he is risen. I live, I live with power over sin. I live, I live because he is risen. I live, I live to worship him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, because you're alive. Because you're alive, because you're alive, I live, I live, I live.
thank you, Paul and choir, uh, piano, uh, for leading us in worship. Beautiful, beautiful music today. Thank you so much. Details and decisions. Lots of details, lots of decisions. Uh, yeah, you may be thinking, uh, I'm actually talking about the last month. That's probably what it's felt like for most of us. Lots of details and lots of decisions. Uh, but what I'm really talking about is all of the details and decisions you have to go through when you've had a loved one that has died. I mean, if you've not experienced that, boy, there's just all kinds of things you have to do. Lots of details to sort through, lots of decisions that have to be made to, to make arrangements for a funeral, for a burial. Uh, and that's even worse if it's a tragic, sudden death. And then it's compounded if it's by somebody who is young. All of those things that are happening. Well, there were some women uh, long ago who were facing all of the details and decisions about a burial of one that they loved. One they loved who had died. Uh, so let's read their story this morning in the Gospel of Mark in the 16th chapter, in the first eight verses. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking back, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You see, Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified he has risen he is not here see the place where they laid him but go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee there you will see him just as he told you and they went out and fled from the tomb for trembling and astonishment had seized them and they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid and these women were taking care of details. Um, the women were on their way to take care of the detail of anointing Jesus for burial. It, it's early in the morning, and they're on the way. The sun has uh, just risen. Uh, they probably started while it was still dark, but they're on their way on this morning. And I can imagine it's a rather solemn day. I think they're still trying to get their minds around the fact that Jesus, whom they had been following, whom they loved, whom they cared about, is dead. And they are in, on the way. I can't imagine that there was a lot of conversation going on this particular morning, that there was too, too much that anyone was saying. Uh, they were going to take care of what was not a favorite task, I can imagine, for anyone. Uh, but in Judaism... Uh, Preparing someone for burial, anointing them for their burial is considered a good deed, a good work. And so it's something that would be done uh, with care, uh, with great interest. Uh, in this group of women, maybe not all of them had ever done this task before, but somebody most likely had already done so. They knew exactly what to do. And, and so they're heading their way there for this necessary task. And uh, these women had, had watched to see where Jesus was buried. Uh, they wanted to know where he was. So when this time came, Jesus was crucified on a Friday. And it was late in the day and the Sabbath was approaching that would come at sundown on, on Friday. And so uh, really they had to hurriedly get Jesus off of the cross and to this tomb. And they did not have time for all of the proper burial of Jesus and the anointing of him that they would do. So uh, on this morning, they planned the Sabbath has passed. It's now a, a new day. They had set aside this time to go, and these women are making their way there. Uh, but there was one detail about all of this that was concerning to them. Uh, the, these women were, I would imagine this was much of their conversation, if there was much conversation at all, was what are we going to do about the large stone? Uh, for a large stone had been rolled in front of the tomb to seal its entrance so that nobody else would get in. And while there were several women 
still it was large, uh, I would imagine they're imagining this is beyond our capacity to roll this stone out of the way. But surprises of surprises, uh, the tomb is open. The, the rock has been rolled out of, out of the way, this very large stone. It's an unusual twist of events. Uh, and because the tomb is open, uh, they go into it. Uh, you can enter into these tombs. There's a, a, an opening. You actually walk in. And, and when they enter in the tomb, there is a young man seated there on the right in white. Uh, it's interesting that he's on the right. You know, that's the good place to be, right? You, know, you move to the right, and that's what so often we think is we put the good on the right and he was wearing white. I mean, what else would you wear? Of course, it, certainly it would be white. But it's kind of strange to find someone sitting in a tomb. Most people I know don't even like to go to cemeteries. Now, because of what I do as a pastor, I, I probably spend a little more time in cemeteries than, than most people. Now, one of the interesting things about being a pastor is you make friends with funeral directors who spend more time in cemeteries than, than I do, but most people I know don't really like to go to cemeteries, and if they do go, they, they don't want it to be dark at all. They're kind of leery of cemeteries. I think most of them know there's nothing would happen, in, but still, it's just that idea, and here you find this young man just sitting in the tomb, kind of like he's hanging out there. Seems kind of odd, but that's that's what is happening, and and so it, it, there's this one in the tomb, and then he talks to them, he he speaks to them, uh, he he gives them uh, the, these words: "Do not be alarmed." Uh, those are good words. I, the idea, of course, here is this is an angel. Uh, and that's what we find angels saying in the scriptures when people encounter them. Do, do not be alarmed. And he quickly tries to calm their fears. Do, do not be afraid, he's saying to these women. Oh, why? 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 It, it wants them calm because he has great information for them. He has some incredible news for them. Jesus is not here. Now, if Jesus stops, if he stops there, Jesus is not here. Well, that leaves room for the imagination to run. Jesus is not here. Where did they take him? Where did he go? Who took him? Why, why is he not here? What has happened to him? But he doesn't stop with those words. He is risen. He says to these ladies, he is risen. Jesus is not here because he's alive. He's out there walking around somewhere. He's not in here. He's alive out there. He motions. He says, see, look where they laid him. He's offering them proof. Jesus was dead. They put him right over there. They had laid him out in the tomb. There would have been a place prepared in those tombs to lay a body. Look. That's where he was. He's not there. He is offering to these women proof that Jesus is alive. That Jesus is alive. And he offers them to them. And then he gives them some instructions. First of all, he says, go. You, know, you can't stay here. You're not going to hang out here. Go. And he says, tell the disciples and Peter. Well, there, there were 12 disciples. Uh, one of them uh, has also died. He hung himself because of his betrayal of Jesus. And, and then there are the other, and then there are 10 of the disciples who are most likely uh, in agony. Uh, they're in deep grief. Uh, they've given their lives to following Jesus for three years, probably thinking of more of a climactic ending to life than Jesus dying on a cross. And so no telling what all they're feeling. Go tell those ten. And, and Peter, he, this young man in the tomb singles out Peter. Peter. Peter was the one who denied Jesus. Peter is the one who, when he was accused of being a part of Jesus and being with Jesus, swore that he was not, that he was not with them. 
He was not with Jesus. Even though he had told Jesus he would never deny him. He would never betray him and it, uh, like that by denying that he was with him. But when pressed, he did. And then just as Jesus said, you'll deny me three times before the rooster crows. And he heard the rooster crow. And he wept. And he says, be, be sure and tell Peter. Go, go tell the disciples and, and, and tell Peter. Peter needs to know Jesus is alive. Well, here's their reaction. They, they fled. They ran away. Uh, they ran like they were scared. Because despite the fact that he has said, do not be alarmed, they're alarmed. Do, do not be afraid. Uh, they're afraid. They, they run off. That's how Mark ends the text that we read today. They were afraid. They were trembling and they were astonished. Uh, maybe they dropped the spices they had taken with them to, to anoint Jesus with. And, and they just run off. And they said nothing to anyone. The greatest story ever never told. The greatest story, they're told to tell it, and they tell no one. Now, according to Mark, all of Jesus' ministry, he had been telling people to be quiet. Now, now, it's not just the general roar of a crowd, hey, you all be quiet. No, as he encountered people and had relationships with them and did things for them, he would tell them, to not tell people. In chapter 1, Jesus heals a, a leper. And he told the leper, after he healed him, to, to say nothing to anyone. Matter of fact, Mark says that Jesus sternly warned the man not to tell anyone. And Mark also says the leper almost immediately began to tell people what had happened. In chapter 5, Jesus heals Jairus' daughter. Um, Jairus was this man. He had a daughter. She had died. Um, and by the time Jesus gets with Jairus to his house, the mourners are outside the house uh, uh, wailing and weeping uh, uh, and really kind of causing a commotion. Uh, part of that is a cultural event uh, that would happen. There would be this uh, a loud mourning over the death and this is the death of a child so certainly uh, elevated that nature of that and Jesus tells them to calm down for the girl is simply asleep and they laugh at him and he goes in to see the girl with mom and dad and he takes her by the hand and lifts her up and she is very much alive and he gives strict orders to tell no one in chapter 7, he heals a deaf and dumb man. Dumb meaning that he could not speak. Uh, and he touched the man, and his ears were open, and his tongue was loosed. And he could now speak, and Jesus gave him orders uh, to, to not tell anyone. And the more pe Jesus told people this, the more they told. In chapter 8, there's a blind man who is healed. And Jesus uh, heals him and gives him his sight. And there's a village nearby. And he tells the man not to go into the village, but to go directly home. And Jesus does that because if the man goes into the village, he sees more people, uh, greater his temptation to start telling people what has happened to him. And Jesus simply wants the man to go home. But instead of being quiet, all of these people talk. Now, through the messenger that is in the tomb, the young man in, the, in a white robe on the right side of the tomb tells them to go and tell. They are scared. They run off. And they tell no one. What's up with that? I mean, why would you do that? I mean, you have the greatest event in history at your disposal. The greatest story now ever in existence, and you keep your mouth closed? Well, Mark tells us they're afraid, and that's probably what closes their mouths, and they are they're prompted by fear into silence and by disobedience. They're, they're disobedient. They are told to do something. This is a message to them from God to them through his messenger, this angel there, the young man 
in the tomb in their silence. I mean, they, they have the greatest story ever. The greatest story ever. Up to that point, and, and it's been a couple of thousand years now since then. And I, I don't care if there's another couple of thousand years, I won't be around for all of them. I, I don't care if there's another couple of thousand years. This is still the greatest story ever. It's the greatest event in history ever. And lest those of us who know the story and also do not tell it, let's not be too judgmental of these women. Uh, we need to go and tell because it can change people's lives. I have a dear friend of mine, James, who works for Oklahoma Baptist and is on their executive leadership staff. And uh, once a week during the midst of this um, coronavirus global pandemic, pandemic that we are all living through, uh, he uh, shares a, a brief word uh, to Oklahoma Baptist. And I, I see those. Uh, this week, uh, his brief word to them was to tell his story uh, of salvation, uh, of the good news that he has, of the encountering this good news, this great story. And, and he relays that story, how, how important, how powerful that is. We have the world's greatest story. Jesus died on a cross for the penalty of our sins. He was raised from dead by God to fully conquer sin and death. I mean, if Jesus had just died, sin would have won and death would have won. But Jesus died and God raised him from the dead to have the ultimate victory over sin and to have the ultimate victory over death. And now it's possible for anyone to admit that they are a sinner and ask for the forgiveness of their sins. And that's what my friend James was relating to people that, that he had done. And then we have this Jesus who will forgive us. And here's the thing that my friend said. He said, Jesus changed my life. He said, certainly he had changed my eternal destiny, but he changed my life. That's what Jesus does. He changes lives. And we have this story to tell. And the women were quiet. And too often we are as well. What we... We have the greatest story ever, and we don't bother to tell it. Now, in uh, these times in which we are all living right now, um, many of us want to watch some news or look for news stories and scroll through social media and trying to learn things and see what's going on. And all of us have experienced people sharing stories as they understand them because they only listen to part of the story. They didn't get the full story. And it's amazing how often people want to share news stories and tell parts of the story, especially if it makes people look bad. Or if they have an ax to grind against a group of people or uh, they have a bias or a prejudice against a group of people. And they, they, they only tell part of the story without learning the whole story because it makes people look bad. It's amazing how easily and how quickly we do those things and how quickly we are to keep our mouths quiet about the greatest story ever. Because powerful things can happen when we share. And that's why we need to share. Uh, one of my favorite things about the Super Bowl is commercials. You know, one of those major sporting events we did get to have in 2020. Missing out on a lot of others. Uh, now, I don't think the commercials are as good as they used to be. And somebody will blast me for that probably. But I don't think they're as good as they used to be. Uh, but back in 2008... Uh, the NFL actually ran a commercial promoting the NFL in the midst of the Super Bowl, which is always interesting to me. But this was one of those great feel-good news stories uh, about two guys by, by the name of Ephraim Salam and Chester Pitts. Ephraim was a college football player at San Diego State University, and while he was there, he would go to this local grocery store to, to shop for food. And he said when he would go in there, he would see this young man that worked there, it was just huge, a large man. And one day he, he talked to him and said something to him about playing football. He said, do you play anything? And, and Chester said, I, I play the oval. Ephraim wanted to know, what's that? 
Well, it's a part of the woodwind family, Chester replied. Ephraim pressed him. He said, you should play football. Well, he got, he, Ephraim got uh, Chester to, to come and talk to the coach, and he walked on to the football team and made the team. And, and matter of fact, Ephraim says, he says, I, I got drafted in the seventh round, and Chester got drafted in the second round. And he didn't even have the dream until I gave it to him. And those are some powerful words. He, he didn't even have the dream until I told him to dream it. People do not have Jesus until those of us with know Jesus, who know Jesus offer him to them. That's the way it works. It's the way it's been working since Jesus in the New Testament. That those who know tell others who don't know so that they can have what Jesus has. I've told you today already, if you've never given your life to Jesus, it's this Easter morning and you know uh, Christians are celebrating a risen Savior and you know all of that stuff in your head, but it hasn't done anything to your heart. And my friend James, when he told a story, he talked about when he was a small boy, he, he walked to the front and made a decision because he, he knew that's what he needed to do. His dad was a bivocational pastor, his mom, uh, highly involved in church as well, he, he knew, but when he was 15, he had figured out he really never did that, and he knew that, and finally got to the place where he knew he needed Jesus. If you've never given your life to Jesus, perhaps today you're sensing something in your spirit, you're not sure what that is, that's the Holy Spirit trying to tell you you need Jesus. Jesus has made it really simple. He's done all of the hard work. He took on himself our sins. He took on himself the sins of all of us, anyone, everyone who would ever live when he went to the cross and paid the penalty for our sins. And the scriptures tell us that if we will believe that in our hearts and we will confess Jesus as Lord, he'll save us. We tell Jesus, I'm a sinner. I understand I'm a sinner and I need a savior. Would you save me? Jesus will save me. Well, if you've never done that, I invite you to do that today. I have, a, I have another friend whose uh, Christian birthday is Easter Sunday. You know, Easter Sunday moves around, so it doesn't fall on that exact same day. But every Easter Sunday, he is so excited because he remembers giving his life to Jesus on an Easter Sunday morning. Would you give your life to Jesus for all of us who have already done that, I want to remind all of us that we have the greatest story ever. And too often we are like the women in the text and we don't tell anybody. Even we are guilty of sharing those stories that maybe make people look bad. Maybe we don't even know if it's fully true, but we'll pass along those stories. But the greatest story ever that can actually change lives, too often we keep it to ourselves. And I'm not trying to blast you, for I realize I do it myself. But all of us need to hear and understand that we've, we've got this greatest story ever. And it's the greatest story ever because of Easter Sunday morning in an empty tomb and Jesus is alive. And we get to tell that story. Maybe this year our Easter commitment to the Lord needs to be that we'll tell that story. We'll pass on that story. We'll let others know that story. Today I, I, I want to ask you to respond to the Lord about that. And let me offer you some options about that. First and foremost is I've told you the story of Jesus today. If you've never trusted in Jesus, would you do that? Would you ask Jesus to come into your heart? Um, if you have questions about that, maybe you want to know more about that. Uh, if you're watching by Facebook Live or you're watching it later, you can put something in the comments there. Or you could email us at connect at lakeshorebaptist.com and somebody will, will respond to you. We'll talk to you. We'll reach out to you if you'll give us the way to do so. 
to all of my church family who's listening today, and you know the story of Jesus, and you know the story of Easter, and you're excited today. And matter of fact, maybe you haven't been this excited in your living room in a long time because you've got to celebrate and worship Jesus in your living room this morning. But you realize we all need a greater commitment to tell others, not just on Easter Sunday, but every day about Jesus. And you sense the Lord saying, hey, I, I, matter of fact, I know people you can tell. Would you make a commitment to tell people about that? If you'd like more information about Lakeshore, matter, matter of fact, maybe before all of this started, you thought, hey, I, I want to go visit that church. And now you get to visit without showing up through the doors. There's nobody to greet you, nobody to overwhelm you or anything like that. But you'd like to know more about Lakeshore? Again, you can email us at connect at lakeshorebaptist.com. We'd love to be able to help you out. Uh, maybe you're looking for a Bible study group, small group study. We, we have lots of Bible study groups that are actually, they're going to be meeting here fairly soon. We probably can't get you connected today, but we could get you connected by next week. If you would, again, reach out to us at that same email address. And we can help get you connected so you can study God's Word with a small group. They're doing that virtually, and you get to see everybody, uh, and they get to see you and get to know you. Uh, we would encourage you to do that. If you have questions, you need prayer, the same thing. Reach out to us either by Facebook, uh, responding to today, or send us an email. We'd love for you to do that. Don't think just because you're sitting on your bed at home having a cup of coffee you're in your living room with your family, and you may be thinking, in your mind, in your heart, I can get by without responding today. Is that the best choice to make? I, I would argue with you it's not. To be silent. Because whatever you're sensing today, it's not from me. My, my words aren't that eloquent or that powerful. But what you may be sensing deep right in here, in your heart, in your spirit, what the thoughts that are being prompted in your mind are coming from the Holy Spirit. Because our risen Savior is alive and well, and He is seated at the right hand of the Father. In all that we have celebrated across this past week and all that we have remembered from last Sunday and Palm Sunday and the triumphal entry of the parade of Jesus into the city of Jerusalem through washing the disciples' feet and introducing us to the Lord's Supper on Thursday and his crucifixion and burial on Friday and yesterday a silent, calm day to the joyful celebration of Easter Sunday morning. I want you to know that. The greatest story ever can be your story too. And you don't want to be silent about it at all. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to worship you, to celebrate together. Lord, we thank you for the greatest story ever. Lord, those women who were told to go and tell, and it says they didn't tell. Lord, I might have been stunned into silence too. But Lord, I'm past the point of being stunned and oftentimes I'm still silent. Would you forgive me for being silent? Not telling the great story. But Lord, help all of us who know you, who love you, who profess to be yours, to tell your story, the greatest story ever, with others. Father, for those who are listening, and your spirit is prompting them that today is the day they need to respond to salvation in you, Lord, to trust in Jesus as Savior. Father, I pray that they would do so. Lord, it's easy to get distracted. It's easy to put it off and say, never mind, I can do that later. It's easy, just quite frankly, they can turn it off and stop. But Lord, I pray that your spirit presses into them and they will respond to you. Lord, we rejoice in this Easter Sunday. Lord, it's a different day. This room I am in is usually packed, packed, packed on Easter Sunday. But today, Father, you have packed it with your spirit. 
for those of us who have gathered to lead worship for others. Who are elsewhere, we thank you for that. We rejoice in you. We celebrate you today. In Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this time of worship. I'm so glad that you do I did. I hope that it blesses you. I hope that you would encourage others to watch. You know, it's one of those things. You may be watching this live, but it'll be there. Somebody can watch it later if they want to as well. Encourage others to do so. Thank you for joining us. We'll look forward to seeing you next Sunday morning at 9 for live or later. It'll be posted for worship next Sunday morning. Our worship band will be leading us as we worship the Lord together. Have a great Easter. God bless you. Thanks for joining us.